and welcome. Dirty Plot by Julie Doucette originally began as a series of underground, self-published comics in the late 80s. While self-publishing this title, Julie also submitted work too and was published in other underground publications, such as Women's Comics and Snake Eyes. Eventually, Julie had her work published in Robert Crumb's irregular anthology title, Weirdo, and this exposure helped her secure a contract with Drawn and Quarterly, who, in 1991, would begin publishing Dirty Plot as a regular-sized comic. The first four issues of Dirty Plot mainly consisted of reprints of her prior mini-comics material. Then, with the fifth issue, the series began being published yearly with new material. In the end, the series concluded with the twelfth issue in 1998. Following that, Julie would go on to create graphic novels, the most notable of which is The Madame Paul Affair. Almost all of the material in Dirty Plot is short stories. There are two longer ongoing stories, Monkey and the Living Dead, and Julie's Diary of Her Life in New York, which would be reprinted as My New York Diary in 1999. The content of Dirty Plot is very dreamlike, absurd, and very sexual in nature. For the most part, the stories appear to be centered around Julie's fascination with, and her fantasies about, penises. And while, yes, there are some pornographic elements to the material, I wouldn't suggest that the intention of the material was to turn anyone on. It's like, hmm, how do I explain this? It's like the diary of someone being honest about the object that appeals to them on a basic, sexual level, and wondering out loud why that object has such appeal while also acknowledging that she might not understand that appeal beyond a basic, sexual level. In a way, my choice of words is quite specific. There is an objectification of the penis in the work, yet it's not salacious objectification. It's, as I previously said, a fascination. <laughs> I think the unique art style gives the material a sense of almost childlike wonder, while also making the stories feel, well, a little dirty at the same time. I may be projecting here, but I do think Dirty Plot is chiefly about that mysterious, unique thing called desire, Baby, I wanna fuck you. which can activate unexpectedly and for reasons that aren't obvious, no matter how deeply you explore your own internal mechanisms. And Dirty Plot embraces and explores this topic with a distinctly female voice and perspective. Peep Show by Joe Matt began as a series of strips that were eventually collected and published as the cartoon diary of Joe Matt. The Peep Show comic book that would begin in 1992 was a direct continuation of that original collection. It's probably good to read that collection before you read the series, as it does give you the background of the relationship between Joe and his then girlfriend, Trish. It's not absolutely necessary, but that's what I'd suggest nonetheless. The comic itself is broken up into three autobiographical arcs. The first arc, between issues 1 and 6, was later collected as The Poor Bastard in 1997. This story details the final months of the relationship between Joe and Trish. The second arc, between issues 7 and 10, was later collected as Fair Weather in 2002. This is a jump back in time to Joe Matt's childhood, detailing the beginning of his sexual awareness. The final arc, which ran between issues 11 and 14, was later collected as Spent in 2007. This story returns to the current day and examines Joe's life following the breakup with Trish. Peep Show, as the title implies, is a slightly voyeuristic glimpse into the external and internal life of the writer-slash-artist, Joe Matt. It's voyeuristic because Joe is absolutely not a sympathetic character whatsoever, but you can't help but feel compelled to watch as he fucks up his life time and time again. Joe is someone with unrealistically high standards and expectations for a partner, while simultaneously being someone that would never attract a partner with such qualities, if such a person existed outside of pornographic fantasies, that is. Baby, I wanna fuck you. He's demanding, selfish, and beholden to his desires. Peep Show is a rather unflinching look at oneself and the consequences of being a slave to the ever-changing object of your desire while concurrently being a slave to the basic human need of not wanting to be completely alone. These two elements are in constant conflict, and that manifests directly in Joe's relationship with Trish. There is an odd, almost objective honesty to the material, and I think that's because Joe doesn't knowingly misrepresent the other people in his life. The portrayals of the other people may not be completely accurate, but there is an honest attempt, at the very least, to understand their opinions without dismissing them outright. 
In fact, I would say Joe balances his own wildly unrealistic needs with the more concrete perspectives of those around him. Also, Joe does accept that he is the person responsible for the shitty state of his own life. He may not accept this immediately, but he does get there eventually, usually through arguments with friends or through his own critical internal monologues. Now, one might wonder what the difference between Dirty Plot and Peep Show might be, since they both are thematically similar. Well, beyond the obvious, which is the differences between the female and male perspective concerning sex, both approach the subject of objectification in different manners. Dirty Plot is dreamlike and ambiguous to a degree. It feels inconclusive, I suppose you could say. Dirty Plot doesn't draw any conclusions or have a definitive stance on the object of desire. It explores the topic from various angles and with different approaches. Peep Show is very specific about the object or the objects of desire. These objects are very specific women or very specific types of women that, again, contain very specific qualities. Both titles are fantasies, or more accurately, both are the exploration of unrealistic fantasies. Dirty Plot is more playful with the subject and seems to recognize the absurdity of itself. Peep Show is very focused and self-aware, spitefully living in denial of the unreality of those fantasy desires. Now, before I conclude, I don't think it's fair or even remotely accurate to say that either Julie Doucette or Joe Matt are representative voices of their genders. Or in less fancy words, Julie isn't every woman's perspective, and Joe isn't every man's perspective. I don't think I've given that impression during this review, but I thought I should make it clear in case there was any ambiguity on my part. However, I will say both do highlight the very, very basic foundation both men and women have concerning sex, desire, and fantasy. Again, this is on a very basic level, and it varies greatly from individual to individual, depending on where they fall within the sexuality spectrum. I'm gonna kill you.